Hi, we're here today at Winks Bay Reserve and we're celebrating National Endangered Species Day. And with me, I have Dan Everson. He's a biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Dan, we're happy to have you today. Well, good morning and welcome to Endangered Species Day for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Alabama is blessed with very high biodiversity and this is a great for a place for biologists like me to live and work. And uh, one of the things that's very interesting, as I mentioned, is the very high biodiversity here in Alabama. For one example, uh, we have over 110 species here on the endangered species list for Alabama. And uh, these include 46 species of mussels. We've got 19 species of plants on the endangered species list. We've got over 10 species of uh, uh, snails and so we have a big job here in Alabama. Over 80% of these species actually are aquatic or wetland species. And so the Fish and Wildlife Service has a big, big job here in Alabama. And I have a, a question for you here. Explain what you just said, um, threatened and endangered. What's the difference between an animal that's listed as threatened and one that's listed as endangered? Uh, the way our agency uses the terms an endangered species is one that's just about to become extinct. In other words, it's just about to disappear from the face of the earth. And we have a law that's called the Endangered Species Act that's designed to protect these species. And it's also designed to protect its habitats. Uh, we also have a category called threatened species. And those are the species that are not in quite as much trouble, but they're still protected under the Endangered Species Act. And uh, we have, as I mentioned, we do have a big job here in Alabama trying to protect both the threatened and endangered species here. You know, today we're going to be talking about some animals um, that we have here in the area that we were able to actually have here on camera, but I know that there are a lot of other endangered species here in coastal Alabama that some people may just not be aware that they're here, and of course we couldn't have them on, uh, on the show today, so tell us what some of those are. Uh, some of the ones you may be familiar with include uh, the sea turtles, you may also uh, think about the manatee. One of the animals that we recently took off from the endangered species list is the bald eagle, and that was a success story down here. But as I mentioned, a lot of our species here in Alabama are aquatic. They're uh, bivalves called mussels, and we also have a lot of snails, and uh, quite a few species here. Um, I also know that there's a, a little animal that lives down at Gulf Shores, and it's the beach mouse. Can you tell us just a tad bit about the beach mouse? Alabama beach mouse lives on the seafront area down here on the Fort Morgan Peninsula, they live in the primary dunes and they're a nocturnal mouse that uh, thrives in these uh, dunes just off of the beach here on the Gulf Coast of Alabama. And they're one of the uh, species that we're trying to protect here in the state. So we have a lot of teachers and classes watching us today out there. Um, where can teachers go to get more information or anybody for that matter about the endangered species that are actually in their area? Well, if you live in Alabama, you can call our office. Our office is in Daphne, Alabama. And the other thing you can do is we do have a website, and you can check out www.fws.gov. And you can look at the Endangered Species link, and you can find all kinds of information about endangered species there. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to um, talk about some of the causes of things that end up getting animals listed as a threatened or in danger. So tell us, what do you think the biggest problem is that animals face? Uh, the biggest issue we face here in Alabama and also nationally is just loss of habitat. And it's a, something that we work with day in and day out. Animals have been pushed further and further away from their, their preferred habitats. And uh, that's a big concern of ours. Uh, as I mentioned here in Alabama, about 80% of the species we work with are aquatic species. And so what we work very hard to do is try to protect uh, the aquatic habitats in the state. Uh, for example, uh, a lot of the rivers here in Alabama, they once were free flowing from all the way from the, the headwaters in upper Alabama all the way down here to the Gulf of Mexico. Now we are, over the last hundred years, we've put in a series of dams on many of these rivers and we've turned what once were free flowing rivers into a series of deep water lakes. And that's great for if you're a bass fisherman and a power boater, uh, but it's not so good for the, the mussels and snails and some of the smaller fish that uh, once lived in these rivers. Uh, the other thing that we have a tendency to do is we remove a lot of the streamside vegetation next to our creeks and rivers. And here in the southeast in particular, what that does is tends to cause a lot of 
erosion very quickly and it completely changes the habitat of our, our, our freshwater and riverine systems. And uh, so, like, again, loss of habitat would be the, the biggest reasons why we're concerned about uh, these aquatic species. So um, I hear that there, what you're saying is there's some man-made causes of habitat loss and then there's some sort of natural, if you will, losses, habitat loss, like what do you think about global climate change? Uh, global climate change is an issue that we're starting to work on and it, it basically is we're seeing sea levels rise and we're seeing temperatures change and storm patterns change and rainfall patterns change and it's something that we're going to be working with in the coming years to try to ensure that we've got habitat protected for all those species that are still going to be in this area. Okay. I see LGs over here waiting with some questions so we're going to take some questions. Yeah, we have some questions coming in already this early. Um, I hope we'll be able to answer some of these questions. Here's a question for, from Brookville Middle School. Miss Jones' class is asking, where do juvenile animals hide in an estuary? You want to take that, or LG, you want to answer that? Um, well, there's really a lot of places um, for juvenile uh, organisms to hide. Um, probably the best place is in the emergent marsh when the high tide comes up. There's a lot of um, hiding places in and amongst the grass. Sometimes there's submerged aquatic vegetations like vallisneri or tape grass here. Organisms can hide in there. Um, or various debris, um, logs and wood and things that come drifting down. There's a lot of places to hide, really. Okay. Got another question for Dan? Um, yes. What is an invasive plant? An invasive plant is a plant that can outcompete all the other plants in an area. And so typically what you'll see is something like Kogon grass down here in southern Alabama. You'll find it growing along the roadsides and pretty soon it's spreading into the woods and then it's into people's yards and it's invading all these other areas where other plants uh, that we would prefer to have there, it's now taken over. So what you're saying is these plants that can outcompete native plants that are food sources for animals are a problem because the animals won't have enough food to in their area, right? Yes, that would be one of the big issues. You have another question? We do. This is from Bell Elementary School. Um, thanks for sending this in. It's Miss Elliott's fifth grade class. How many endangered species do you have in Alabama? I can handle that one. On the threatened and endangered species list, as I mentioned before, we have over 110 species uh, on the endangered species list. Okay. Um, another one from Miss Elliott's fifth grade class are, what are manatees? Manatees are a beautiful animal. You have to imagine a 1,200 pound mammal that lives down here in these seagrasses. And we have them here in Alabama, which many people are surprised to find out about. Uh, you often think of manatee being in Florida. Uh, but we do have them here in Alabama. They travel up the, the Gulf Coast. And the other amazing thing is they're actually a freshwater species. They don't spend that much time out in the saltwater. They sort of dive in and out of these coves and bays as they work their way up here in Alabama. And they'll spend the entire summer and a good bit of the fall up in our uh, small estuarine and freshwater rivers and streams here in uh, Mobile Bay. Um, can you give us some idea about what people can do to help, uh, help with the manatees? Well, one of the things uh, here in Alabama in particular, people just aren't aware that they're here and so they're not thinking about manatee when they're uh, driving fast in their boats up and down some of these uh, freshwater streams. And so boating is one of the biggest causes of manatee injury and manatee mortality.